Hello, it is Friday, August 13th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. I've just realized, doing the dateline there, that it is apparently Friday the 13th. Very spooky. I hope that does not bode ill for our crossword solve today. Maybe one thing that does bode ill for my crossword solve today was my complete um, whiffing of two clues yesterday, to which I would like to briefly return. Most significantly was um, a clue that read, help wanteds, with an S at the end of wanted, help wanteds, question mark. And the answer was a bet. And a number of people have gotten in touch through the comments or elsewhere to point out that a bet means to aid somebody in a crime. And that's the meaning of a bet that's that's uh, being referenced there. And I, I did, I, I understood that at the time. I think I didn't sufficiently um, talk through my thought process. So I did get that, but what for some reason I couldn't see was how help wanteds match the part of speech of a bet. And for some reason, I kept wanting to make it a plural of help wanted, more than one help wanted. So in other words, I was thinking maybe it could be a betters or something like that. Um, not worth not worth lingering on that any further. All it meant was that to abet is to help wanted, to help wanted criminals. Uh, so I was making it more complicated than it needed to be. Um, and I also just didn't talk through my process. And I suspect if I had talked through my process on the solve, it would have helped me as well. So there's a lesson. And then the last thing, uh, the second thing, is simply that I didn't ever return, or maybe I did and I and I didn't see, didn't get didn't get it for some reason in my head. The clue was lead into dash vocal, and the answer was equi. And I think because I was trying to think of something that would be pronounced vocal, I didn't get the equi. And it is of course equivocal. So it is not vocal, it is in that case the vocal is sort of elided. Equi equivocal, and I and I didn't get uh, I didn't get that when I was looking at the clue, and I can't remember if we returned to it, but I don't think I did. So I just wanted to mention those two clues from yesterday that could have been handled more smoothly on my on my end. Anyway, let's move on to today's puzzle, a Friday puzzle. So it may well be a tricky one. Yesterday was a yesterday was on the tricky side for a Thursday, I would say. And sometimes they balance out. Sometimes uh, when there's one day that's one puzzle that's tricky for its day, sometimes the next day is the other way around and vice versa. But we don't know. We'll have to see. This puzzle is by John Gutzetta and Michael Hawkins, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. Are we ready to get started? Let's say yes. Okay. Breakout performance. Well, I feel as though this is the sort of thing that Maybe could be a couple of things. The first thing that pops into my head is star turn. So that's just a guess right off the bat. Let's look at some crosses and see. Plants, well, it could be sows, to sow seeds. Neighbor of a Malay, could be a Thai. Blank much, hmm, could be ain't much, maybe, since we're, this is speculative, although it's becoming less speculative. It's looking more, star turn is looking a bit more solid. Let's keep going. Revolutionary inventions in the cooking world. Okay. Um, this has a question mark. So there's something a bit punny going on here. And I'm lingering on it because I want to give you a chance to maybe hit upon it yourself if you haven't already. Um, and if not, that's okay. I, I have a guess. I may not be correct. But focus on the revolutionary inventions in the cooking world. This could equally be clued cooking invention or something like that. But the revolutionary is important. And I think it is something around rotisserie, which, as you probably know, is a is a, a spit that is inserted through the meat or the meat is, is sheathed onto the, the spit and then you rotate it with a crank. And that there therefore all of the sides of the meat are cooked. Anyway, rotisserie ovens, because it's plural. Rotisserie ovens. 
Uh, campaign Q and A. Uh, campaign Q and A. So would this be a politician? Oh, a town hall. I was going to say, for instance, a politician at a town hall, and then I realized town hall is probably that's probably a that's probably a fairly U.S. politics specific term, I would guess. In the U.K., you might call it a hustings, is what you'd call it here. Um, thinking could be um with two m's or uh with two h's. Vocalizations that I know I am particularly susceptible to, so I'm sorry if you find that annoying. I'm trying to get over it. I have a post-it note on my screen that says no um. So I notice it occasionally, although I'm sure I slip up all the time. I only put this up here the other day, so don't uh, don't go back and look at my older videos to try and find evidence that I'm that I'm um, depressing my ums. There I had another one. Anyway, thinking could be uh or um, but I'm not sure. And it could be something else. Put down in a way. Oh, and then here we also have put down in a way. So one of these could be put down as in lay on a table or something like that. One of them could be put down as in euthanize an animal, perhaps. One of them could be put down as in a jeer or a insult. And why am I not seeing any of those? <laughs> and then here's put down in a way, starting with an N. Let's look at the crosses. Mocking response to whining. Um, uh, I think this ain't is incorrect. Ah, yes, yes. My, my confidence in this corner was a bit much, let's say. And that makes this potentially, oh, boo-hoo, mocking response to whining. Oh, the crossword was hard yesterday. Oh, boo-hoo. We all have problems. Did you really just say that? Wait, what? Did I really just mock a crossword solver, a fictional straw man crossword solver in my head? Put down in a way. Oh, note. So here's a sense that I didn't get at. Put down as in a, in a way as in Put that down, take that down, note it down. That's what that's getting at. Put down these clues, these answers in the crossword. Put down in a way, a uh, roast. So this is, this is the insulting meaning of put down, roast. Close is shut, to close a door is to shut a door. Camp show group, this is another, I would say probably US specific fill. This would be USO. I actually don't remember what that stands for. It's probably something, United Service Organization or something. It could be something like that. It's an, it's an organization that I, I don't know everything they do, but I believe they essentially provide services and entertainment for members of the U.S. military stationed overseas. And so you'll hear the phrase USO show, and what that refers to is when a musician or a stand-up comic or someone like that will fly to an overseas U.S. military base and do a free performance for the soldiers or any military staff. I think so. That's that's what that is. Sorry, I, I explained that because it's the kind of thing that might come up in the crossword more often than not, and it is a sort of a culturally specific reference. So serves the purpose of could be uses as, although uses as is something that I would I would use this as this glass, but this glass is the thing that serves the purpose of whatever I'm using it as. So I'm not sure if that's correct. Let's go back up here. We 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 um we got diverted from moving through the across clues because we had some early luck with this northwestern quadrant up there. So let's keep going. Some diner orders. I don't know, bacons, toasts. It could be a lot of things, I feel. Stick. Could be adhere. Let's just try it because it, it, it it's enough letters that I feel the guess is worth it, even though it could probably be other things as well. With 55 down, oceanographer's aid. Do we have any clues down here? We do not. We just have C14 down. So two words, three letters each. Or I suppose it could be more than two words if some of the words are very short. Pseudonymous children's author Hunter. I don't know. My blank. My dear? I don't know if that fits with the 
exclamation point. We, because of the exclamation point, sort of want this to be an exclamation, which my dear sort of is, but not not as this not not as such a speculative attempt. We'll we'll look, wait till we have more. Okay, study of touch as with smartphone screens. Okay, so this is haptics. You might have seen this phrase in marketing or options in your phone, things like that. Haptics refers to the sort of physical feedback, I suppose, or, well, it can be that, but it's also just generally the, the, the science of study of touch around um, human interaction, I suppose. Anyway, artist behind the best-selling album of the 21st century, 30 plus million units. Well, I wouldn't have known this if you asked me out on the street, but with five letters and a D, I'm going to guess it's Adele. Close to the ground, sports feet. I'm the wrong person to be taking a guess at such a long answer about a sport. So let's move on. Some diner orders, ham, hash browns, no, that's all too short or too long, ham something. Let's keep looking. Midwest city that shares its name with a suburb of Phoenix. Huh. Well, I don't recognize this as a suburb of Phoenix, and in fact, I don't know any suburbs of Phoenix, so it's no surprise that I don't recognize it as such. But my guess is that this is Peoria. Now, I don't just happen to know, I mean, it might not be Peoria, but I'm going to explain why I think it might be, because it might be useful to you. Peoria is classically often referenced in U.S. political discourse, not so much these days, but I think in decades of old, in the mid 20th century, as, as a stand-in for, I suppose, sort of middle America or the average voter. Uh, people would say things like, sure, it's a good policy, but how will it play in Peoria? That was a thing that, people don't say that now, but that was a thing that was said, I think, in the, the mid to mid-late 20th century, and sometimes self-consciously referenced by political reporters in reference to that. So I think it's, it might be Peoria. Anyway, let's keep looking here. So an oceanographer's aid. Well, it certainly might start with C, wouldn't it? Because an oceanographer works in the sea. So we can maybe put that in there. Pseudonymous children's author, Hunter. Eric, I mean, it looks like Eric, doesn't it? Man's name. I mean, it could be a woman as well. It could be Erin. Aaron Hunter, Eric Hunter. Those both seem plausible. Would there be any other letters that we could start this with? I'm sure that there would be. Some diner orders. I still don't know. I don't know why I'm not seeing that. End up choosing. Let's just move on to here and we'll get some more crosses. So if we end up choosing an answer for this crossword, we will settle on that answer. Ah, so it might well be Aaron here. That is helpful. Ah, my hero. My hero is what this was. My hero. Uh, close to the ground. Sports feet. I don't know. Close to the ground. Could start with shoe. Who knows? Some diner orders. Oh, hashes. Right, of course. So an, a hash would be a, a breakfast dish. You could have a corned beef hash, for instance. And Aaron Hunter is the pseudonymous children's author. Not familiar with that author? That's okay. Close to the ground swords feet. Well, it does seem like it starts with shoe, but I still don't know what that is. Even more, perhaps. Two, thri thrice, maybe? In other words, you you do something, you do it again, you do it twice, then even more, you do it thrice. Speeds. Okay, well, that does work here because speeds could be highs. This is sort of an archaic way of referring to speed, high. high uh, I'm trying to think of, of examples from... It's the sort of thing you would see in fairy tales and stories like that, that kind of archaic language for speeding. Serves the purpose of, right, it could be used as as, but I'm not totally convinced. Brand with the flavors Grabin Grape and Blazin Blueberry. I'm not sure offhand. Let's look around. Target of some trimming. Uh, well, I think the most obvious thing would be you trim a hedge. Obviously, you can trim lots of things, but trimming a hedge is very much a, there's sort of some romance around that, that phrasing. Even more, perhaps. I don't know, it could be thrice, but this would be HRC. 
<laughs> Human rights campaign probably doesn't have the flavors grab and grape and place and blueberry. Although who knows? Uh, so I don't, I don't know if it's thrice. They might claim that things are fixed. Uh, I'm not sure. Bay blank, certain horse. Oof, I don't know. Something that has declined, I've noticed in recent years in the New York Times crossword, and I don't know if this is an example of this, it may not be, but something that used to be, I would say, almost a staple of the crossword, and much less so now, is names of successful racehorses and other clues dealing with horse racing in general, which presumably for a number of decades was the kind of thing someone might simply know. When you watch a you know, film noir, often movies about down on their luck characters from the mid 20th century, often they're betting on the horses or the ponies and they will talk about it and they're constantly referencing names of horses and things like that. So it must have been a thing that your average person was much more acquainted with a number of decades ago. But as, as horse racing has fallen out of the public realm to some extent, and, and I suppose to the degree to which it still exists is largely a, uh, an exclusive upper-class thing, or at least that's the general vibe around it. It does seem to have also fallen out a bit of the New York Times crossword. Anyway, that was a bit of a digression. You didn't need to know all that. But sometimes there are horse racing clues still. They occasionally make their way in. I don't know if this is that, though. I don't know if this is the name of a horse or the name of a particular breed of a horse. So I'm going to skip it since I have no idea. Why am I ling lingering there? Bit of metal texturing. Could it be a whirl? Think of that as a thing with wood, so maybe not. It's probably bad that I thought of that because now it's going to push my brain away from potentially more accurate answers. Follower of 2030. 20 odd, 30 odd. Um, hint, not sure. Organization behind the Carl Sagan Center. Um, well, just based on the association with space, Carl Sagan obviously being a, a well-known astronomer and public intellectual. Based on the number of letters in that I there, it might be SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Um, I'm not sure. I don't specifically know if they have a Carl Sagan Center. It's just a guess based on the space connection. It's rarely pure and never simple, Oscar Wilde once wrote. Oh, uh, boy. I wish I could get that right off the bat, but I can't. And I don't know about SETI. Let's, well, this does, this bidding considerations does, uh, it does have an, it is plural, so it probably does end with an S, so maybe maybe that is more likely. Traffic directors. It's got a question mark, so what's that getting at? Foot traffic, web traffic, traffic the film. Cardi B's blank bad. Uh, in addition to sports, I'm not the best person to answer questions about modern pop music. Could be she bad. That would fit this ending in S. It's rarely pure and never simple. What if that were H? Ugh, I wish I could see these. Collar. So this is getting at a sickness, right? I'm not seeing it immediately. I don't think I looked here. Hardly a cheapskate. So if one is hardly a cheapskate, one spends big or shells out the cash or something like that. Oh, even more, perhaps. Oh, thirds, thirds. So I was, <laughs> funnily enough, I was sort of on the right track with thrice, but I was think thrice would be an adjective. Um... We've done this thrice, whereas this is, this is in fact a noun. You're having even more. Even more is the thing you're having. Not just seconds, you're having even more. You're having thirds. Okay, and then they might claim that things are fixed. All right, well, my first thought when I looked at this was lovers, but that makes less sense than losers who might claim that the game was fixed and they are sore about it. They're sore losers. Okay, sometimes it's it's easy to be a sore loser sometimes when you butt up against a really difficult crossword and have to 
have to look elsewhere. The thing I've done a number of times over the years, although I've done enough of these things at this point, they're less frequent for me now. Bidding considerations, asks. What is the ask on this bid? Traffic direct. Oh, cones, cones. So the I was putting the question mark in the wrong place, which is definitely something I did yesterday. I was thinking the question mark maybe is around traffic. Maybe it's another meaning of traffic. It wasn't. Traffic was road traffic. It was the most common meaning of the word, and the question mark was was referring to directors. So they're being cute about who's directing the traffic or what in this case. It's cones. Serves the purpose of, ah, not uses as, but acts of, much more appropriate. This glass acts as the thing that it serves the purpose of, which is just a glass, so nothing surprising about this glass. Um... Oh, truth. Truth is rarely pure and never simple, Oscar Wilde once wrote. So, rarely pure truth, rarely the simple truth. The very clever as Oscar Wilde always was. And then here we do have She Bad from Cardi B and Neural from Metal Texturing. So that is a fascinatingly spelled word, isn't it? K-N-U-R-L. I hope that's correct. I think it is. The rest of these crosses seem pretty solid to me. Hardly a cheapskate. Oh, I see. Uh, a big spender. So <laughs> I think the first thing I said was spends big. And I had that in the opposite order. Again, different part of speech. And often, as I think as I've said before, on a Thursday and beyond, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, often the thing that makes them difficult is that the clues will be just a bit more ambiguous. Big spender isn't an obscure concept or anything like that. But the way that it is clued could be referring to an adjective, a trait. Someone is hardly a cheapskate. Someone is spendy. You see what I mean? It could be an adjective. But in this case also, someone is, the, the hardly a cheapskate is the actual person in question. Ah, that person's hardly a cheapskate. That person's a big spender. So that the sort of ambiguity of the cluing is often a big part, I think, of what can make Thursday and onward puzzles more difficult. Because once your brain gets into that rut of thinking about a particular part of speech, it, it, it can be hard to wrench it out of it. It really can. So let's look here. Uh, okay, so here, here's another example, actually. Do in the evening. Now, obviously, this is written such that your your first assumption will be that it is a verb to do in the evening. This this will be something. This will be a verb that indicates doing something in the evening, partying, dining, whatever. Uh, well, no, that wouldn't really be accurate. It would be do. I, I don't know. There isn't really necessarily a word that means do something in the evening. Anyway, my point just being, uh, it sort of looks like a verb, doesn't it? But in fact, it's a noun. This is referring to a do, um, which is used actually a slightly more British. To be honest, I, you don't hear you don't hear people in American English as often refer to a do, although it's perfectly valid and it does happen. It's referring to a uh, a party or something. In this case, a soiree, a do that occurs in the evening, a party that occurs in the evening. That's what that's getting at. And let's look here because we've got this cross natural material used for fuel. Um, so I think this is biomass. Um, nothing clever about that. It's just a clue that refers to an answer. Wind with a three octave range. So obviously wind in this case could be wind and has a number of different meanings, but because it has this three octave, it's pretty clear it's referring to a musical instrument. There's not really a lot of deception going on here. And we can see with all of our crosses, it's pretty straightforward that this is an oboe. That's that's that. All right, so let's go up here. Active ingredient in marijuana, for short. Uh, that's THC, right? So let's look down here. Baller in old lingo. I assume this is a sports nickname. Or rather, a slang term for someone who plays ball. And I don't know which, which ball, but I'm sure we'll find out. Insight offerer. Not sure offhand. Let's look here again. Close to the ground sports feet. Is there anything I can get at here? Shoes. Two. 
shoestring. Ah, shoestring maybe? Let's put in shoestring and see what happens. So we've got bay blank certain horse. I still don't really know where to go with that. Hint. Uh, oh, it could be sort of a tinge. So uh, here's another here's another one, right? Hint looks like a verb. Or it, it looks like a tip, something like that. It's either that sort of verb or noun, but but in the same meaning, the same sense of the word. But it could also be a hint meaning just a touch of something, a hint of color. It could be a tinge of color. I don't I'm not certain it is, but but it could be. So let's look at the crosses. Lead into core or fest. Could be nerd. Nerdcore or nerdfest. Nerdcore meaning, I think, music that is very nerdy, basically. And then nerdfest. Wow, total nerdfest. Look at all these people solving crosswords on a YouTube channel. All right, Bay Blank. Insight Offerer. Oh, wow, okay. So this is, I think... Getting at a make of car, a Honda, Honda Insight. I'm not even sure that I'm aware of the model Honda Insight. I was just looking at these letters and thinking, what on earth could go in here? And Honda works. And Insight sounds like it could be a Honda car model. So let's let's say it is. Bay blank. Ah, okay. So um, I wouldn't have known this. I wouldn't have known Bay. But I think as we have seen in maybe two or three weeks ago, at least, at least once, maybe twice, I think, on this series, we've seen Roan, which is the um, a descriptor of a particular eh, coloring that horses can have. And so it wouldn't be surprising to me oops, if Bay Roan were a breed of horse. And then a baller in old lingo. I'm going to guess it ends with an R to carry through the... Uh, that person's a cager. That person is someone who cages, I guess. Seems plausible. Setting in Marvel Comics. Um, let's quickly look at across Kung Blank Kung Pao, right? Kung Pao Chicken. Um, so Asgard, right? The home of Thor, presumably that is. And then Bikini, e.g. So without the crosses, you might be tempted to think that this refers to the garment. Um, swimming garment or... or swimwear. But because of this TES, I'm going to guess that it is referring to Bikini Atoll, um, where the, the Bikini Atoll, the Atoll named Bikini, uh, which was a um, atomic bomb test site. So it could be test site or test area. Um, don't know which yet. Let's keep going. Where majors have majors in brief. Could it be saying where a major, an o a military officer has majors, in other words, university degree subject areas? Could it be referring to a military academy? Not sure yet. And I don't know where to go with this shoestring. Unfortunately, the shoestring, the parts that I could infer run, run out here, right where we already have all these crosses. So that's not helpful anymore. But maybe it will be eventually. Refute. Um, this is one of those ones where it should be very obvious, and I'm just not immediately seeing it, so I'm going to move on. Track number one on the Beatles compilation album, One. Well, I wouldn't have known what this was offhand, but with these crosses and letter count, I'm going to say it's Love Me Do, uh, a Beatles song. And it was an early Beatles song, so that makes sense that it would be track number one, I suppose, on a compilation album. Rich Source. So this is referring to a rich vein of ore, say, in a, in a mine, I think. Or wait, yeah, well, maybe. So it could be load, although it just occurred to me, it could also be loam, which is sort of rich soil. It could be rich source of nutrients and things like that. But I'm guessing it's load, as in the mother load, that sort of meaning. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that in case we have to revisit it. But the O seems, seems pretty plausible. Something carbon monoxide lacks. Well, I think it famously lacks an odor, which is why you really need a carbon monoxide detector in your home. Father of Hecate. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Um, oh, 
boy, let's go. Oh, <laughs> well, here's another sort of here's another sort of mythical reference because a handsome guy is often described as an Adonis, pioneering Ford Auto. Oh, probably one of the most cl- famous car models of all time, I suppose. The Model A. Oh no, I guess the Model T is the famous one. So I, that was probably a Model A as well. Oh, refute. So to belie. I want to say, I keep wanting to think Percy's here, but that doesn't, does that mean anything? Is that correct? I mean, sorry. That was my, oh yeah, maybe it is. Because Oceanographer's Aid, C map. I guess it is. That simultaneously sounds right and wrong to me. I don't know why that is. That's what occurred to me initially, but it didn't seem right, so I didn't put it in. But I, I suppose it is, and I'm just misremembering something that I'm simultaneously remembering, which is odd. But happens sometimes with the crosswords. All right, let's keep, let's keep going. To... Um, block up, let's say a river, would be to dam it. We're going to dam, uh, they dam the river. Blocks, dams is what that's getting at. All right, I suppose it could be a noun as well, right? A block could be a dam. The, that that also could work. Okay. Ticket line. Ticket line. So the question mark could be, I mean, as we as we should remember from this crossword, um, the question mark could be referring to either of these words. It could be a line in this case, meaning uh, punnily, meaning something that's said to you with a ticket, right? Something maybe a police officer says when giving you a ticket or something that the person at the box office at the theater says when you're buying a ticket or an usher showing you where you're sitting based on your ticket or the uh, question mark could be around ticket. And anyway, I'm just going to move on for the time being until we have some crosses. When Harry first shared a ride with Sally, e.g. When? So is this the referencing the film when Harry met Sally? I don't know what this is referring to. I've seen that film, but I don't remember. If this, if this is in fact a reference to that film, which it seems like it is, but it might not be. There might be something very clever going on. Uh, but if it is a reference to that film, I don't remember what this is referring to. Person who is willfully alone. Um. Well, with that S, so it's got a question mark. I think the willfully is probably the pun part. So I'm thinking sort of last will and testament. So maybe it's someone who's the sole heir named in a will. That's what I'm thinking. Title of Hits by Garth Brooks and Lil Nas X. Once again, I'm the wrong person to be filling that out. Brook of Spaceball. Brooks of Spaceballs. Mel Brooks. Um, bikini. Uh, so Test Site. Could be Test Isle, but that's sort of odd, right? I think it's probably Test Site. Where majors have majors in brief. Rota? Is that somehow the answer? Let's see. Shoe string, close to the ground, sports feet. So what would be... Is the close to the ground already covered by shoe string, or is there something else? What would be close to the ground? I just don't know. I wish I did, but I don't. Uh, philanderer. So this would be a cad, a cheater, somebody who um, sleeps around, I suppose. Oh, would this be... Like a move, is that, is this, is this what I'm looking for here? Sort of, am I thinking of the wrong word? That's a wrap. Or is it rue, R-O-U-E? I feel as though there's a word for this, a French word for this that I'm not quite bringing to mind. Oh boy. I'm gonna leave these here as sort of a reminder, but not have it fully filled. The A of ADL. Well, it must start with A, right? Uh, oh, Anti-Defamation League, perhaps. I blank saw true beauty till this night. I ne'er saw, right? A contraction of never. I ne'er saw true beauty till this night, Romeo. So maybe it is Rue, because that's a wrap. Could be Saran, a brand of cling film, plastic wrap, Saran wrap. Ticket line. Boy, this is almost a fully solved cl- answer. Why am I not seeing it? Am, <clears throat> arm. Boy, I'm sorry. 
When Harry first shared a ride with Sally, e.g. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So you don't need to remember the film. I, you know what? I didn't pay close enough attention to the EG. It's not referencing a specific, particular version of this in the film When Harry Met Sally. And we can see that because it's saying EG, which means this is just when Harry first shared a ride with Sally, that's just one example of the thing we're describing. Uh, we're, not ref we're not referring solely to the Harry and Sally example. We're referring to the category of thing in general. This is just an example. It is a meet cute in a romantic comedy the um, the moment when our our principles meet in a cute way, I suppose. Okay, so this looks like maybe the close to the ground sports feet could be shoestring march. Could that be correct? Where majors have majors in brief, so it's in brief. So it's probably an abbreviation or an acronym or you know something like that. So really, it could be almost any letters here. Oh, shoestring catch, maybe? What is that getting at? Maybe it's because you had to bend down so low to catch the ball that you sort of touched your shoestrings. Maybe that's what that, that's getting at. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm relatively confident about that. That feels, I've never, I don't think I've ever heard that phrase before, but that feels pretty plausible. So let's go back here ticket line. Oh, I see. I see. So this is a, it's a line that's printed on a ticket, which again, I don't think that's a, that is yet another uh, meaning of line, a printed line of text that I wasn't getting. And it is admit one, which would be printed on a ticket. Title of hits by Garth Brooks and Lil Nas X. I don't know, rodeo, I suppose. And then this is ROTC. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I think ROTC, ROTC is a, um, ROTC is a university sort of military um, recruitment program. So there it is. There's the Friday puzzle. I would say that was less difficult for a Friday than th yesterday's Thursday was for a Thursday. I think I actually solved them in a relatively similar time frame. although doing it on the video, it's not a great comparison because obviously I'm I'm stopping and explaining things and musing out loud. And, and so it's not necessarily the fairest comparison, but I think if I had to guess, I would say that I basically solved this one at about the same rate or possibly a little faster. And it didn't feel as tricky as yesterday. I didn't feel as, as stuck as often. But of course, that's quite variable from person to person and day to day. So feel free to share your experiences with this puzzle. I think this puzzle was a good lesson in parts of speech and in parsing clues, in parsing how things are clued in the crossword in ways that can be a little bit deceptive, intentionally deceptive. Um, I mean, there, there were some very straightforward clues in this puzzle. I mean, right here, active ingredient in marijuana for short, THC. You, that's just what it is. That's the thing that this is. Nothing about, nothing, uh, Nothing unusual about that. But here we have insight offerer. And there's no question mark on this clue. And there actually doesn't, there doesn't have to be because this is literally the case. A Honda, Honda is the offerer of the Honda insight. It's not a pun. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it really isn't a pun. It's actually, it's, it's, it's slightly witty, I suppose, but it is literally true. So you have to be prepared for that sort of thing, even when they don't, even when they don't clue you in with a question mark. Um, whereas soul heir, a soul heir isn't literally someone who's willfully alone, right? I mean, a, a, a soul heir isn't, isn't sitting around saying, I, I demand to be alone. I demand to be on my own as the soul heir. Um, the question mark is getting at the fact that something in this clue is a little bit of a pun. And it's willfully, where instead of using willfully to mean uh, sort of self-consciously and almost obstinately being this thing, we're using it to allude to the fact that the way in which they are alone is willful. It's dealing with a will. And so that's what that's, that's, what that's getting at. And in this case, I, I think it was we can guess that the question mark is probably referring to the willfully because willfully is a, it's, 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 
not an obscure word, but it's certainly a less common word than person who is or alone, right? So it's, we can maybe infer that the question mark is getting at willful, but there were cases where that was less the case. And I'm trying to remember what some of them were. There were cases where the question mark wasn't as obvious. Oh, here, we don't even, I don't think we ever even looked at this clue. We might've only gotten it through crosses. One way to take a stand, ironically. Right, so here, the answer, the, the answer is sit in. So the point being made is that a sit-in is a form of protest. A number of people all go to a place of business, for instance, and sit in it peacefully. And the irony is that by sitting, you are metaphorically taking a stand for a principle. So anyway, we didn't look at, we didn't look at that, but that's what that's getting at, and that's another example of a little question mark pun clue. Um, ah, yes, it was ticket line. I well, I don't know if it was ticket line, but here's another one, right? We have to be willing to um, consider the whole clue and think about the different parts of speech that either of these two words could be, and to think about all of them. And I maybe could have gotten it earlier if I were more willing to think of even more potential meanings of line in this case. And then revolutionary inventions in the cooking world. Um, I don't know. I. I was very lucky with this and got it very quickly. I would, I would be curious to know how other people fared with this clue because these incredibly long grid spanning clues can be amazingly helpful when you get them early because it's a wealth of crosses that you suddenly have. Um, and obviously it took me a lot longer with shoestring catch, although I was pleased with my ability to sort of puzzle through it. Sorry, I was just looking through it. Oh, here we go. Here's what it was, traffic directors. This is, sorry, this is the clue I've been looking for the whole this whole time, which is I kept getting uh, distracted by these other ones. Here's an example of where the question mark seemed to me like it should have applied to traffic, but in fact, it applied to directors. So you can't take these things for granted. Anyway, I will stop belaboring this point, but this, this was a very, I think, a very useful puzzle, a very cleverly clued puzzle in general, and a useful one for reminding us about some of the ways we need to consider um, how things are clued, particularly around the sort of pun-oriented answers with the question mark. So I will uh, I will cut that short as I've been going on for a while, post-solve. I'll let you get on with your day. I hope you enjoyed this puzzle and this solve. And if you did, then please subscribe to the channel so that you see these crossword solves as they go up each morning. If you think you know someone who might enjoy this series as well, why not spread the word? Why not pass it along on Facebook? Or I just set up a Facebook page for this, and I don't think anyone has liked it yet. So, <laughs> so maybe head over to Facebook and search for The Daily Solve and, and be my first like on that page. Um, anyway, um, spread the word however you like. It doesn't have to be on Facebook. I don't really, I very rarely use Facebook myself, but I did think I might as well set up a page for it there. Why not? And finally, if you're particularly enjoying the series and you'd like to be invested in its long-term continuation, then you could consider donating a couple of quid or a few bucks on either a one-off or recurring basis to my Kofi page, coffee page, which is linked in the description underneath this video, and presumably on whatever platform on which you're watching this video. So thank you so much for joining me. And if you have contributed through that page, I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much. To all of you, thank you for watching. I hope you have an excellent Friday. I'll be back tomorrow for what very well may be the most difficult crossword of the week. Until then, take care.